RTA, or Real-Time Analyzer, is a standard module included in the base price of audio tools. It is also available as a standalone application. This demo is recorded in audio tools, although the standalone application has nearly identical features. The RTA is a fully featured one-third octave real-time analyzer that takes a broadband audio signal input, filters it into multiple bands, and reports the amount of energy in dB SPL present in each of those bands in real time. RTA is a precision audio measurement instrument and its accuracy is limited only by the choice of input device. The algorithm and filters used in Studio 6 Digital's RTA meet or exceed ANSI Class 1 and provide the same professional quality measurement results that you would find in any other hardware or software based RTA. Let's take a quick tour of RTA's interface. This is the main graphical display you will see when the analyzer is being used. I'll tap the play button, which will start analyzing the audio coming into my input device. Frequency is displayed on the x-axis, and amplitude in dBSPL is displayed on the y-axis. By dragging one finger onto the screen, I can bring up a vertical cursor, which will display the center frequency of the band and amplitude within that band. To remove the cursor, simply slide it off the screen. If I want to zoom the amplitude axis of the graph, an outward two finger pinch gesture will let me do this. To fit the entire measurement on screen again, simply double tap. The top right corner displays the broadband SPL value of the current measurement. Tapping the photo thumbnail icon will take a photo of the current measurement and save it to your iOS device's photo roll. Moving to the bottom of the screen, you will find the play pause button to start and stop the analysis, access to the save recall screen, built-in signal generator, and setup menu, all of which will be covered later in this video. On the main analysis window you will find two selectors. The first selector will allow you to change the band size from one third octave to one octave. The decay mode selector will allow you to adjust the decay time of the graph. A decay of one second will cause a point to decay at the rate of 20 dB per second. If I change the decay time to 10 seconds, the decay rate will now be 2 dB per second. There is also the option for an average mode, which will take a true linear average of all the readings, as well as a peak hold mode. Tapping the reset button will reset each of these modes. Tapping the small sine wave icon will instantiate the built-in signal generator. I'll turn the generator on, and this will generate a sine wave through the output of my audio device. If I tap the frequency box, I can change the frequency being generated or use the slider to change the frequency. I can also generate pink or white noise, or a square wave with this generator. Pink noise is the typical test signal used with an RTA. Pink noise has equal energy in each octave, or one-third octave, so in theory, if your system is flat, you will see a flat line on the RTA display. Tapping the wrench icon will bring up the RTA setup menu. From here, you can customize how the RTA operates. There are two SPL selectors, which will let you change the filter used for the broadband SPL and also the bands respectively. I'll change both to A-weighted and go back to the main graph screen. You can see that the A-weighting filter has been applied to both the broadband SPL in the right upper hand corner as well as the individual bands. I have two options for background colors. The default is bright, which is the white background we've seen so far. Turning the screen switch to dark will change the background to black, which is helpful if you are using the RTA in a dark room like a club or a concert venue. Several industry standard noise curve overlays are available in RTA. To display a noise curve overlay, tap the text underneath the overlay curve text. This will bring up an additional setup screen. Select one of the overlays, NCB, Balance Noise Curve, RC, Room Curve, PNC, used in the EU, 
Cinema Large Room X Curve, NR or NC. The overlay curve will then appear on the graph. The noise curve value will be displayed on the top left corner of the analysis screen. Note these curves are only valid when the RTA is in octave mode. Transmission loss calculation is available as an in-app upgrade to RTA. Reference curve options, if purchased in audio tools, can be set from the setup screen as well. Please watch our videos on these options for more information. If I turn on the hearing loss threshold line switch, a line graph which displays the threshold of hearing on the main RTA graph will be displayed. For normal hearing individuals, any bar that is below this threshold line is inaudible even though significant noise energy may be present. Turning on this switch activates the max and min bars on the main RTA screen. When active, the maximum and minimum levels of each bar are stored and shown as blue and cyan bars on the screen. To reset the bars, tap the max min reset button, which is displayed in a box in the lower left of the screen. Dragging a single finger across the screen will bring up the vertical cursor, which displays the dB of the max, min, and current band dB. Turning on the audio monitor switch will let you monitor the audio coming into the RTA input. Turning on the peak decay bar switch will activate ballistic peak meters for each analysis band, and the 3 dB scale switch will display the y-axis in 3 dB steps as opposed to the default 10 dB steps. The graph scale selection will let you adjust the maximum and minimum values displayed on the y-axis and the lock graph scale switch will lock the current x and y axes. The scale will not change when new measurements are made or recalled. RTA can be used for basic exploratory room response analysis and tuning. You can see my basic room tuning setup here. I am using an iAudio Interface 2 with a measurement microphone positioned in the sweet spot between my two loudspeakers. The headphone out of the iAudio Interface 2 is plugged into the input of my preamplifier. Back in Audio Tools, I will turn on pink noise from the generator. If my system is flat, I will see a flat response on the RTA. In practice, most people prefer a slight bump in the bass and a gentle roll off in the high end. I can use this measurement to adjust the equalization functions on my preamp or receiver. It is a best practice, however, to not make extreme adjustments to EQ. As a good first step, it is a good idea to move speakers in your subwoofer around first in a room before making large EQ changes. You can use the Save and Recall menu to compare a current measurement to a recalled measurement. I'll start by capturing my reference measurement. I'll enter the Save and Recall screen and store this measurement. I'll then recall it. You'll notice the name of my recalled measurement is displayed in blue type and thin green horizontal lines are displayed on the graph. If I turn the RTA on, I can now see my current measurement as it relates to my recalled measurement. The vertical cursor will show the dB of the stored measurement and current measurement in the band the cursor is located on. Another option exists for comparing measurements, the difference mode. This is accessed in the RTA setup menu. I'll turn on difference mode and navigate back to the main analysis screen. You'll notice that the graph has turned green. The recalled graph is now being subtracted from the current measurement. This mode is especially useful if you'd like to determine the equalization curve required to match a new measurement to a previously measured response. The vertical cursor will show the stored, current, and difference measurement in each band. Finally, turning on the normalized plot switch will do two things. First, it pins the difference plot near the 1000 Hz point on the graph, rather than letting it float. And in non-difference mode, it pins recalled plots to the live plot near 1000 Hz, making it easier to compare them. Audio Tools, the RTA module, and the RTA standalone application work with all current iOS devices and all audio input devices supported by the hardware.